Okay, so uh, so the basic data structure is really, really simple. Now, uh, here's, here's where the fun part starts. Um, these lists, these column vectors, are very, very sparse. Right? Now, why are they sparse? Because we know that most words don't occur in most documents. In fact, we have something called Zipf's Law, which says that, among many other things, it says that half of our words, half of our terms, are only going to occur once. So they will look like this thing. Right? Uh, so you could store the full vector, but it would become exceedingly wasteful as your collection grows. So if your collection is, say, 20 billion documents, then storing a 20 billion long vector full of zeros is wasteful. You don't want to do that, and if you did that, your index would never fit anywhere. Right? It wouldn't fit on disk. So what you want to do instead is have a sparse representation for the entries in the index. Right? So instead of, storing a, instead of storing a full vector where you have zeros and non-zeros, what you have is you store uh, the tuples which store document ID together with the value that you want to store in there, right? So in this case, our value is just the frequency, so we're going to store document ID together with the frequency, right? So the word thing becomes three colon one. This means that it occurs once in document three, and it doesn't occur anywhere else, right? Uh, the word he, on the other hand, occurs in every document, so we uh, list out every single uh, index position, right? So uh, what does this gain you? This gains you that for for uh, for small for rare terms for terms that don't occur very much, uh, your savings in space are very very substantial. Right? So uh, here you're going to be wasting let's say two bytes instead of five bytes if you store the full index. Uh, for a term like he, you're wasting space with this representation, right? Because you're using two bytes or two numbers, two, uh, two integers, two words, uh, to store each one of them. And if you use the full representation, you would use only five, and now you're using 10. Right? So you are wasting space for very frequent terms. But if you remember Ziff's law, there are very few very frequent terms. Right? Most terms don't occur in most of your database. So in fact, you always save space by going to the sparse representation for almost all terms, except maybe the most frequent one. Um, um, and, uh, and, and the savings in, uh, in, in terms of space are uh, massive. <clears throat> so, so you get a very compact representation of the data. You also get a very fast way to access the data. Now, one thing that I didn't mention here, if you look at all of these lists, you'll notice they're all sorted, right? Each one of them, uh, they don't occur in any order. They actually occur in the document IDs are increasing in every list, like three, four, five, four, five. Right. The reason you do it this way is um, if you keep your lists sorted, you have a very fast mechanism for extracting matches out of multiple inverted lists. Right. Uh, and it's called linear merge, and that's what we'll talk about on the next slide. Right. So why do you need linear merge? Uh, if your query was a single word, Getting the matches is trivial, right? So if my query was weak, I just I just look up the inverted index, and there I have my matches. Document one matches, and document five matches. Now, what if I have a multi-word query? So what if I have two or three words in the query? How do I get a list of matches from that? And that's where you need linear merge, right? So the the basic way you do this is you have the query. In this case, my query is ink wink. I pull up an inverted index for ink. I pull up an inverted index for link, and then I do the basic linear merge. How many people know linear merge? That's not a trick question. The simple, the, the normal linear merge that you know. Okay, great. So, so we'll spend a bit of time. Um, so the way this works, uh, you have two lists of tuples, right? You set a pointer at the beginning of each list, and then you iteratively do the following. You look at the two pointers and you check if the document numbers under the two pointers are equal or not equal. Right? In this case, are they equal? No. Okay. So if they're not equal, you take the smaller one. The smaller one is the pointer to wink in this case. It points to document number one. Right? So what you do is you call a scoring function saying, 
I, I saw document number one, and that document contained the word wink once and didn't contain the word ink. Right. Now, how do I know that it didn't contain the word ink? Yes, right, because the first entry, my entry under the pointer right now is three, right, and this list was sorted to begin with, so I know that it doesn't have document number one. If it did, it'd be under the pointer now, right. So I know that it doesn't have the word ink, and it does have the word ink, so I call my scoring function, and we'll talk about scoring functions in the next slide, uh, and say, in document one, I didn't see the word ink, but I did see the word ink. And then after you do that, you increment the smaller of the two pointers. In which case, so now it's the pointer to wink, so you move it to the next entry. And you repeat the process. Right. Now I look again. Ink is pointing to document 3. Wink is pointing to document 5. They're not equal, so I call the scoring function. I say I found document 3. This time the word ink was present with a count of 1. The word wink was not present, so a count of zero, uh, and then I increment the smaller one. So increment three to four, do the comparison again. Again, they're not equal. Call the scoring function, increment the, four, the pointer, and now, finally, I look on the pointer to ink. I have document five, pointer to wink. I have document five, yay, I found a match. Right? So I found a document where both of the terms are uh, present. So I call the scoring function saying I found document 5. This time both of the terms were present with frequency 1 and, um, and that's a match if you're doing Boolean stuff. Right. Um, and then you would increment the two pointers again. Now, um, so it's a straightforward algorithm. Why do you do something like this as opposed to something simpler? Because this is the fastest way to do it. Right. So it may not seem like that, but it is if you have two sort of lists, the fastest way to get an, uh, an intersection of the two lists is to do uh, linear merge. It's linear in the size of operations, and no matter what you do, uh, you cannot actually do any faster than that um, until we get to term time execution um, in the next lecture. <coughs> so, uh, great. Now, what are these scoring functions? So these scoring functions, they're basically, they basically tell you uh, whether the document matches the query or not, or uh, in case of other scoring functions, they tell you how well the document matches the query. Right. So uh, what goes into the function is the document and the number of terms, uh, the, the, the number of times the query, uh, the, the number of times query terms occurred in the current document, and what comes out is a score. Right. And um, so uh, you already know a couple of different scoring functions. Uh, we had them on the first coursework, right? So the coordination level matching or word overlap is a scoring function. It counts how many terms there are in common between the query and the document. TF-IDF weighted sum is a scoring function. It, count, it, well, it doesn't count anything straightforward, but it produces a score that tells you how well the document matches the query. Uh, cosine is a scoring function. It computes the similarity, the angle between the query vector and the document vector. So that's what scoring functions are. So um, the Boolean, uh, the, the Boolean and the conjunction scoring function, it's basically checks if all the query terms are present or not. So the, uh, if I used Boolean and uh, in this case, it would return zero for all of these documents, and it would return one here because that's the only document where both query terms occur. Um, uh, TF IDF weighted sum, on the other hand, produces a non-zero value for all of those documents, right? Because it doesn't matter if one of the query terms is missing, as long as the other one is present, you still get a non-zero uh, score. So, um, and then of course the cosine and any other thing that you come up with is a scoring function. <laughs>